Hello everyone. In today's episode, we will finish the majority of our farming area, start building the gravel industry, and even select the site for our first coal mining operation. We will also see the first students finish their university degrees, build another housing block, and maximize the production efficiency of our clothing factory. Should be a productive episode. This time around I am trying to do something new. While capturing the footage, I also recorded a voice commentary to help me decide what to say during certain moments. I guess we will just have to see how this video turns out. Please don't ask me to release the raw video with the voiceover. I paid zero attempts to make it even remotely enjoyable to listen to. So with that out of the way, let's start. First of all, I will take out that bigger loan I mentioned a couple times in the previous episode. A 300,000 ruble over 5 year loan should do the trick for now. I will go heavy on construction in this one, so I will have to take out an even bigger one later, but we get to it when we get to it. Next up, the snow plows. We are in desperate need of some road cleaning. The snow is slowing us down way too much. We'll also be better off if we add more trucks to the industrial import line right now. As I said before, our biggest bottleneck is the slow rate of buying crops and chemicals to make fabrics. After a bit of testing, 5 trucks turned out to be the optimal amount. I set all of them to have 80% of their cargo space taken up by crops, and 20% by chemicals. Later, I will change it to 10 to 90%. I will also extend the road maintenance range to 3 kilometers, so we can reach all the way to the border. And since we're here, let's remove that service road. The entrance to the gravel processing plant seemed a bit too far for me, so just to make sure, I checked and it was indeed too far for workers to walk from the bus stop. But adding a footpath solved that issue. The clothing factory has almost filled its worker capacity, and the productivity is nearly at its maximum. Things are looking up. And before I forget, let's put the gravel storage back up to 50%. We panicked a little bit during the Great Coal Scare of 1961, but that's behind us now. Next on the agenda, finally assigning the new construction office to have a pickup for its resources and workers. For now, I'll let it help out on every construction, not just roads. Later on, we will have dedicated offices for certain kinds of constructions. But for now, a free-for-all is fine. This next project is just a little decorative idea I had while trying to decide what to do in this episode. I will first remove the road connecting the central crossroads to the heat exchanger, and trim the footpaths back a bit. I had to remove the heat exchanger's road because it had an unfortunate node placement. I wish the game was more forgiving in this regard, but it's not the end of the world. Now the main reason for all this remodeling, a little footpath roundabout around the central crossroad. Unfortunately there is no room for another node on the southern exit on the crossroad, but thankfully I somehow managed to glitch the footpath under it, so it's a fully functioning circle around it. Now we only need to upgrade the heat exchanger's road again, connect it all back up to the footpath network, and it's all done. Here I was a bit perplexed as to why the second section of this road isn't being assigned to a construction office. Even though it is reachable via a footpath, only the first section got assigned. I guess unlike buildings, roads cannot be accessed by footpaths for the purposes of construction. Good to know. We can at this point also start upgrading the footpaths. Not exactly necessary, everything is reachable at this point, 
but it will look a bit nicer. Of course will we have to do it in segments, so we don't cut off access to certain buildings. Let's turn our attention to the farm. First of all, let's unpause the construction on these buildings. The food factory will have to be paused again later, because it is bloody expensive, and there is no way we can finish it while a lot of other buildings are being constructed at the same time. With the first section of this road complete, the rest is now assigned for construction. All good. This little part in front of the bus station is one of those roads that will have to wait before I can upgrade them. It's too short for a bulldozer or excavator, so we need a second bus station for worker pickups before it can be fully finished. The footpath upgrades are progressing nicely. Looking at the progress of our college students, we are very close to have the first graduate. After that, the number of highly educated citizens will go through the roof, and we will have more of them than we started within a couple months. One75 and education level seem to be the highest we have among them right now. Building the farm will still take a little bit of time, but with the faster imports we should be fine. In the fabric factory, we can go lower with the chemicals, so let's try 30 to 70%. To ensure that the factories operate at peak efficiency at all times, let's add two more buses to their commuter lines. It seems our apartment buildings are pretty much all at their limits. Soon, young adults won't be able to move out of their parents' homes and enter the workforce. We are doing well in terms of employment, but since we just expanded the industrial bus line, we might as well expand the number of available workers as well. That big empty area next to the university looks like a perfect area to develop. I'll just move the heat exchanger service connection a little. I was trying to decide if I want to go with housing blocks made of prefab panels, or bricks. To keep to our current aesthetic, I decided to build another one of these brick ones. We don't have to wait for this driveway to build either. Buildings can receive their construction material through footpaths, so we only need to place down a dirt one, and it can be built in parallel with its road connection. The agro parking lot is almost finished. I was trying to decide if I should sell the road crane I'm currently using and buy a tower crane instead but decided against it. It would need an open haul truck to deliver it to the construction site, and that would not allow that particular truck to haul resources while the crane is in transit. 
Plus I'm not entirely sure tower cranes can work on power poles, and we will need to build a lot of those in the near future. All the footpaths we designated for upgrade have been finished. Time to do more of them. And here's a little bug workaround regarding trees. For now, let's get rid of these trees, because I want to put a neat row of poplars here. After that we save the game, and then reload immediately. When you use the remove trees tool, you won't be able to plant new ones at that particular place in the current session. To fix this, simply save the game, reload, and you can place trees again no problem. There, six little poplar seedlings. Should look nice when fully grown. Let's just fill the rest of the place with bushes, and it's done. The amount of chemicals left in the import trucks after deliveries is still too much. I'll change them to a 10 to 90% split. Since we cannot go lower than 10%, this should be the last time we mess around with their cargo allocations. We placed these stone quarries in the previous episode, and since they are very cheap to build, there is no reason why they should stay paused at this point. Because of their distance from the construction offices, it will be a while before they are all finished, but if they have some free time on their hands, the offices should be allowed to build these. The office at the border outpost is out of range. No problem, I'll just manually assign them, and they should eventually get around to building them. A brief look at our financial situation up to this point, this month has been very good for us. We made 15,000 rubles in profit. Unfortunately the loan interest payments are not listed here, so that is not factored into the overall breakdown of our budget, but considering all the constructions we've been doing lately, we are doing good.
Considering that our health meter never goes above 90%, maybe an extra ambulance can help. Of course the real solution is to have more doctors, and that part is almost taken care of. Since all of our currently planned improvements are already under construction, let's start planning the next step. Of course, I mean coal. According to the map, we should be able to find a patch of it near this narrow passage between these two hills. And sure enough, we have a decent amount of coal under this mountain. It will require a bit of terrain alteration, but it's far from impossible to exploit this area. By leveling this place, we can create a small shelf where we can place our first mine. That was enough for the mine plans to give us a yellow ghost image. We just have to make small adjustments, and we can place this down. And we get a 71% yield out of this location. Let's see if we can improve it a little by moving around a bit. It seems 71% is our best bet with this particular coal patch. I say we go for it. It seems we are just barely out of reach for our excavator to level out the terrain for our road. I don't really know why, it had no problem helping us with the mine's footprint. Maybe it was reserved for a construction, and is now just waiting for pickup from an open hull truck. The distance seemed to be way below 3 kilometers, so that must have been it. Thankfully, bulldozers are more than happy to lend a hand, and I'll just use those guys to make a somewhat passable ramp. I'll very likely revisit this particular road when the excavator is no longer needed somewhere else. That wasn't so hard. I would have preferred a bit more of a natural looking curvy piece of road. I will definitely make a second pass at this later. The new agro farm is finished. Once the distribution office is also built, I will realize that having this many fields was a bad idea. So you can look forward to a bit of redistribution of land. But for now, I'll just tell the original fuel distributor to start moving gas to it. It won't start doing it right now. First we need to supply power to it.
Of course, we won't be getting any actual power until we finish building those high voltage lines, and that's something we won't be doing in this episode. I did notice a pretty sizable drop in our finances here. As expected, all these constructions ate a lot of steel, and whenever we buy a new shipment, it really takes a sizable chunk out of our money reserves. I really think that the little footpath circle turned out kind of nice. Since these paths are upgraded to gravel, the walking distance should be enough to reach everything now. Let's just finish the rest of them. This is where I realize just how expensive the food factory is. We won't be sowing these fields this year, so no need to finish it just yet. We seem to have finally struck a decent balance of crops and chemicals in the fabric factory. I'm really happy with the rate of production here. And we seem to be doing a good job at emptying any excess fabrics from the factory. So we make a little bit of extra on the sides by selling them. Due to their distance, the stone quarries are slow to build. But we'll get there eventually. I really need to develop a more sustainable rate of expansion. For now I'll extend the loan to 400,000 rubles. Hopefully it will be enough to successfully start making gravel. That should eliminate a decent portion of our import costs. And we are already thinking about opening a coal mine, so we already took our first steps towards steel production. It's a long way away, but we got to start somewhere. Let's see how much we can make after the truck makes a drop off at the store. More than 9,000 rubles. Not bad. I think the monument looks neat with the row of poplar trees. There are a couple spots where a tree would look nice, so let's plant some more around town.
and I am happy to announce the first college graduates in our republic. From this point on, we can expect a drastic increase in the number of highly educated citizens. At this point, all of our original apartment buildings are full, and the number of young adults living with their parents is rising rapidly. Now, I could ignore this. Eventually these youths would simply move out of the country, but that extra housing block we are building will give us a bit of overhead in terms of worker numbers. The extremely low unemployment rate means we likely have more room in our buildings for more. We have everything to finish the current phase of construction. I will raise the amount of workers allowed to just walk in and start building the main structure. This will seriously impact the number of citizens going to the bus station. But winter is gone, so we don't need to worry about heating for a while, and the loan we took out will carry us for a bit. So let's just finish this building ASAP. and the penny drops in a couple seconds. Well, would you look at that? It seems we were a bit overzealous with the number of farm fields. At this point I tried to just assign the biggest fields. But eventually I realized that I really just need to swallow my pride and delete the current fields, and replace them with the big ones. The road layout more or less stays the same, only minor alterations are necessary, so the overall aesthetic should not be impacted. Okay, no more procrastinating. Let's get this done. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 
16, 17, and 18. So we wanted to have 18 fields, and we ended up with that exact number. I'll just assign them to the distribution office along with the silos, and we should be okay. We only need electricity to have things moving. And the new apartment building is complete and it is already filling up with new residents. And incidentally, we now have more highly educated citizens than we started with. Happy days! And since that housing block is done, all the workers are back in the factories. The quarries are also done, except for one. We might as well unpause the gravel industries too. As it turns out, mines are a bit too expensive. Let's pause it for now. Every time I take a look at our unemployment statistics, the biggest issue is always the lack of childcare. If we build another kindergarten, we should help parents work more. Now that the little construction spree we went through is over, money seemed to be going up once more, students are graduating in droves, and things are looking up overall. The town store is filled to the brim, and buses leave the station full of workers. Feels like we did good this episode.
I tried to see if we can start repaying the loan in bits, but I forgot that we are still very much in the middle of building the gravel industry. We'll be back to that 400,000 ruble loan soon. Yeah. That truck full of steel made me realize we may have been a bit hasty with lowering our loan amount. We can also replant a couple trees around the farm fields. All that reorganizing removed quite a lot of the original decoration, so let's start remedying the situation. We have ample room to place more small distribution houses if we have to, so gathering all the fresh crops from the fields will not be a problem. We just have to find the right number of trucks to move everything in time for winter. This is where I'm going to struggle a bit. The game has a bit of an inconsistent way of dealing with collision boxes. I could easily place the power poles right next to the road, but now that I want to replace the road because of the grass bug, it won't let me. I'll leave it in a bit of a sorry state in the end. I might end up tearing it all up, power poles and all, and rebuild this section altogether. And that should do it for this episode. I think we made good progress. The farming area is pretty much done, except for the food factory, the gravel industry is well on its way to completion, and we even started thinking about building our first coal mine. We have a new apartment building, and the clothing industry is working at peak efficiency. Not to mention the new college graduates flooding into the worker pool. Yeah. I'm pretty happy with how things turned out. I hope you liked the video. If you did, Dropping a like and subscribing to the channel just might motivate me to make more. Until then, see you later.